Good morning! This is Sunday, October 1st, and this is Juniper Berry Soaps. Jung here making another video on my soap making process, and this one I'm going to be creating a high top soap today. I want to talk about high top soaps. Um, and in general, like, I guess the process of making them, what they, what they are, and just as a maker, how sellable are they? Are they popular? Um, I think a lot of people know about high top soaps who watch YouTube from watching uh, um, the, the Duchess of Soaps, Katie Carson. I'm a big fan of Katie, so hello Katie. Um, and she helped inspire a lot of soapers, including myself, to get into creating these wonderful fan fantasy design soaps that are high top soaps and getting into soap in general. Um, along with um, Anne Marie from um, Brambleberry. Very, very informative. Um, so, we're going to talk about high top soaps today, and this is an example of a high top soap. So, as you can see, this is my uh, market peach soap. I just made a couple bars because I had extra batter, and, and I whipped up some soap uh, piping or frosting, soap frosting as sometimes it's called. So basically a high top soap is a bar of soap and it has uh, frosting, soap frosting on top, which could be made from the same batter or from a, you know, a slightly different soap recipe, depending on, you know, how you want it to behave. So some people use, maybe use a, a, a harder bar of soap for the bottom so that it sets up quickly so then they could pipe on top of it with this more fluid uh, batter that gives them a little bit more time uh, when they want to take their time to pipe the beautiful frosting on top. For this particular one, I have the embeds, which are basically, em embeds with an E, are pieces of soap usually made out of melt and pour. Sometimes if you want to take the time, you can make it out of cold process soap. For the most part, this soap is a cold process soap bar. So you would make it with molds, uh, you would color it. I actually kind of dusted this with mica to create like darker shades of color near the peach pit and the skin of the peach to differentiate, you know, to be, be more artistic about it. You could paint with micas and alcohol to add a little bit of color like to these leaves on these little tiny peaches on the side. And I actually hand piped the peach leaves, because peach leaves are kind of long and curvy and elongated. I couldn't get the curvy effect, but I got the long elongated leaves um, by piping them onto a sheet of parchment paper and letting them, letting them set up. So there was a lot of work um, actually in, involved in this high, uh, high top soap. And in general, there is a lot more work that is involved in making a high top soap. And it is so good. It is fragrance. The, the, oh, just the fragrance is so good. Um, and I put the fragrance in the piping too because it was a non-discoloring fragrance. If you have something that smells like a um, vanilla or a baked good, it'll probably turn your high top soap color to a brown. So I, most of the time, do not add it to the topping, the frosting piping, whatever, um, because it'll turn the beautiful like light colored piping brown. So unless you want um, a brown top or brown soap, then you don't want to do that. You want to just leave it unscented or maybe scent it with something else. So if you're doing like a, a banana cream, uh, make the banana part the piping part that because that fragrance doesn't have any uh, vanillin in it and it's that's the culprit vanillin the, the chemical that's in vanilla that smells like make it makes it smell like vanilla it causes soap to turn brown so a lot of uh, people use their ingenuity and they kind of work that fact that the soap will turn brown into their um, design so maybe one color in the swirling might have that fragrance in it. So some of the fragrance is in there, but not the whole bar of soap down here will turn brown. Anyway, though, I'm getting like maybe a little too technical for this. So on to the soap making. 
So today I'm working on a wholesale order and um, it's for my Etsy shop, Juniper Berry Soaps. And I will be using the Nurture Soap um, Basic Mold. This is the one that is like the most basic. It does not even have the green liner. It still has the um, translucent white kind of clearish looking liner. And I have found that this particular mold is the same exact dimensions as the Brambleberry large uh, loaf mold, which I also own, but I love it, but it's, um, it does not, this one does not have one of those um, bottoms that pull out and allow your silicone and your soap to drop out of the bottom for easier removal of the liner. But I found that the Brambleberry one has one downside, which is it's too heavy. It's really heavy for me. And it's, it's getting to the point where I cannot, um, where it's not as easy for me to lift a lot of heavy things, huge molds and, and, and the like. If I need to do it, I will, um, as long as I can, but you know, <laughs> the reality is, um, lighter weight things are a little bit more, you know, is, is easier for me to handle. And this one has the exact dimensions. The liner is really thick. Um, so that's the plus for this one. Um, although Brambleberry has great products, just high, one of the highest quality product companies, but that particular mold is starting to get a little heavy for me. Um, so, so what I'm going to do is since I already know what the Brambleberry mold holds, I'm going to use the same recipe for this particular mold since the dimensions are exactly the same on the inside of the lining. That's the most important dimension because that's the that's what's going to determine the volume of soap you need. So we'll see if um you know if, if that um, assumption is correct. Okay, I've been making soap for about three years now. Throughout that time, I made not a lot of variations to my recipe. And recently I made a change to my recipe where I use a very, um, I use a higher lye concentration that kind of hardens up my soap bars. Uh, it doesn't make my bars lie heavy, but it does cause the soap to harden up faster because there is less water in my, um, in my formula. My old formulation was very high in butters. It does not make the batter very fluid in that it sets up right away. So what I noticed was a lot of times, unless I had a, a fragrance oil that was the kind that was very user friendly, um, my batter would not give me enough time to create beautiful swirls of color or intricate swirls. So I had to reformulate. And I came up with my own, uh, I call it my swirl recipe, recipe with shea butter. I wanted to keep at least one butter uh, to make my bar luxurious, but I didn't want to use like two or three butters because it was going to make my soap batter um, set up too quickly. So, Sometimes you do have to go back to the drawing board uh, as the need arises. So I'm going to work with my own recipe, you know, uh, learning to soap online with Soap Queen. Um, all those are great resources, but in the end, you should be like your own original artist soap maker. You should kind of create your own at some point. Um, which isn't to say someone else is not doing the same recipe coincidentally, you know, but you know, you don't know that. So the first thing I start with is olive oil and I do, I'm going to do about 10.8 ounces here. So I have my um, scale. I tear the scale. I'm using ounces here. So I'm pouring the olive oil. Okay. That's my olive oil. I use sunflower oil. If you go like 0.05 over, it's not a big deal. Castor oil to add bubbles. Now you don't want to add too much castor oil because they say it makes your bars sticky. 
and that would be not very good. Lay out my non-liquid oils, meaning coconut oil, uh, palm oil, any butters. I like these little pitchers from the dollar store. Double boiler pot. I love these. These like are from when my mom was <laughs> a young woman. This Revere wear. So the shea butter, I just need a little of um, because, um, you know, I don't want the batter to set up. And since it's a very expensive thing, uh, these butters, you just want to use enough um, to make a difference. I use these, um, I know this looks like my are panties. <laughs> I use these washable, reusable hairnets because I just don't like filling the ocean with these hairnet jellyfish, you know, just floating around made out of Tyvek or whatever. And I don't know how disposable Tyvek is. So, um, you know, reuse. I also have my hair pulled back, so it's really not going anywhere, but just in case. Now we're gonna um, get some of that coconut oil and I use the microwave to, uh, heat up and liquefied my coconut and my palm oil. I'm using uh, hydrogenated palm oil and I found that it does not have any kind of negative effects on your soap making process. And that's you know something to note. The prices of things have all gone up. I have noticed a great um, you know increase in the prices of all ingredients so unfortunately we all have to uh, raise our prices to keep up with this and if you don't then you're just you know you're going to lose um, and, and cut back on your own profits and that that's something that you can't you can't sustain although my husband says this whole process of soap making is just not sustainable as it is <laughs> it probably isn't it's not something that is going to make you a fortune not by a long shot um, this is let's say this is coconut oil and i am just going to put in the same amount as my olive oil the down good the good thing about high top soaps is they're a really great vehicle for my creativity i i love art i'm an art teacher but i and i just love showing that in all in all my products however Oftentimes, customers treat the high top soaps a little bit more preciously and they do not use them. They use them as more of a decor item. So if they're not something to be used on their body in a regular way, like uh, let's say a, a regular um, bar soap that you might make, something a little less fancy that doesn't have embeds and piping and all that jazz, then they're not going to buy it as frequently. So it's not something that sells, um, you know, unless you've made a huge name for yourself, like Katie Carson, who sells, uh, who is known for her high top soaps, um, where people go to her to look for her beautiful, fancy designs, then they're not going to move as quickly as, let's just say, a regular, um, more plain soap that might have like essential oils, those kinds of things. The, the, those types of, you know, soaps are more geared toward use and less decoration. So that's just something to think about. So I'm gonna blast this in the microwave. So that's about 50 seconds and you can see how clear and liquidy that is. But just be aware, microwaves, they concentrate their heating in the center of whatever you have in your container. So I just do a nice little stir afterward. Don't forget the oils. One day we will make this a sticker and we will sell this and make a fortune. Not really, because there's not that many soap makers compared to just everybody else. <laughs> But DFO, don't forget the oils. The next thing I want to show you are the embeds that I've made. I am making um, a high top soap today. And with the fragrance, with the lovely fragrance of afternoon tea by Nurture Soap. And it's fresh. What it smells is, basically what it smells like to me is, it smells like green tea fragrance oil. That's what it smells like. It's very pleasant and it does have a certain 
yeah it's kind of fresh and green actually so I made these little uh, teapots and um, I used a little ice cube mold or something like that and the little um, blue dots are actually three-dimensional I took some uh, glycer clear glycerin so put some blue mica in it and I used a paintbrush and yes I blobbed on all those little um, those little dots I also have a mold but unfortunately I don't have a lot of them I just have two I got this silicone mold off Etsy of this cookie so it's gonna have these little cookies and then from the same mold that the teapot came from I have these little um, wafers or other crackers or cookies and I used a shea butter based melt and pour and those don't tend to I thought those don't tend to sweat as much but wrong they do sweat as well um, especially if you have to heat your soap so many times to get it into molds and every time I I melt I try to put just use a little at a time so that the bread uh, the batch is always like a fairly fresh batch get my coconut oil I got my micas when you're soaping it's best to get everything laid out on the counter all your oils even though it's kind of cluttery So right now, I, I can see that the uh, palm oil has not um, has not uh, melted all the way, but it will melt um, quite a bit just with stirring because it's very hot in the center of the pot. To me, this is this is fluid enough. This is fine, and then I'm adding it to all these other clear oils, and it's, it'll be fine. And they fit kind of tight. They're not huge, so I have a um, like good grip with these. I wear the blue nitrile ones, but you know, they get holes in them when I um, accidentally cut them with a piping tip or something. So I've gotten some good life out of these. And when they turn overly yellow um, or like kind of grubby looking, then I know it's time to toss them. Um, but I, I can use these for a while. On my recipe, I added up and, and put on the notes that I needed um, together, the lye and the water. I added them in the calculator or do, do the math in your head if you're really that good. You don't need to get a fresh uh, you know, pitcher. Why make more dishes for yourself? Okay. Um, if you over pour too much lye water, guess what? Put it in your sink. It'll clear out your sink and clean all the gunk out of your sink a little bit. Doesn't hurt. Sometimes I use it in my on my in my bathtub. And then that that drainage is like it'll suck you down because it's so clear. Blending it by hand, and then I'm going to just give it a little buzz with my stick blender. Okay, 1.10, just a boop. All right, a little bit more. And I'm going to pour my fragrance oil in at this point. This is my... I'm going to share with you my design here. I have a little form that I created for my shop. This is my high top soap and I actually have this kind of scalloped gold bottom to the soap and then I have the swirl on top and then I have my piping. So this is a fairly, for me, it's a fairly challenging design. So I need to pour enough to create this kind of gold bottom. King Tut Gold which is a very beautiful yellow, yellow gold. To that, I'm going to add about a teaspoon, maybe a two teaspoon and a half. That looks almost like it's enough. You'll notice 
notice that I'm, I'm mixing it up quite a bit because I want it to set up quickly so I can scrape and then put the other layers on top without it being so fluid that it kind of mushes down and interrupts my little scalloped design layer that I first pour into the loaf. Look how beautiful and fluid that batter is right there. Kind of see it? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap it on my floor. Okay. So I am just going to scrape the sides of my liner because some of the soap kind of like uh, went up the side a little bit. And all the t meanwhile, you know, the clock is ticking a little bit, but what I noticed about this fragrance is it's incredibly well behaved. And then while that's setting up, I'm going to grab a couple more pictures and I am going to split this up into three, including the big one, you know, might as well use that. So this is going to have the beautiful gold in it. That's why, you know, I just put it in the same picture. That was my plan all along. No, <laughs> I'm lying. Um, I just love it when the soap, soap it goes, it turned out just the way I planned. Mm-hmm. I believe that. No, because there's too many kind of unexpected things that, uh, that do happen when you are making soap. So I, I do not believe that. <laughs> when they say that, it's like, mm. sometimes you see their face going, oh, oh, some parts of the videos, they're like, uh oh. And then later it's like, this is exactly how I wanted it to happen. No, it ain't. <laughs> Don't give me that. We all know. Mm -mm, that's not what you, do not go as smooth as all that. But that's okay. So that was King Tut. The blue I'm using is um, Nurture Soap Siren Songs, Siren Song. And um, I have this um, Sexy Stranger on a Train. Did I buy this because it was called Sexy Stranger, Stranger on a Train? No, I swear I did not. The name had no influence over me in buying this mica. First, I'm gonna hand mix the gold. Okay, and same thing with the blue. All the colors get a little hand whisking, hand um, stirring, and I'll just hand whisk it. Is the so here's the scraper. It's just a, a bakery pastry scraper, whatever. I'm trying to keep it at the same level, holding it slightly at a tilt toward the wall, the back of the silicone liner. I'm scraping across the soap and I'm removing some of the batter and I'm just gonna put it right in there, right into my pitcher of gold. Toward the end, you know, the so much like gets smooshed up against the scraper that it's it's kind of hard to and it's hard hard to see so i'm not the very best at scraping maybe i should mark with a sharpie kind of where i want that soap level to be that might be a, a good thing to do like you know next time so this fragrance oil, I finished scraping and I had to do it uh, in several attempts because scraping is not easy for me. Uh, believe me, I'm not a natural at it at, at all. Um, I'm going to now, this afternoon tea fragrance is very forgiving. It is still, still, it's setting up, but it's still fluid enough for me to do a in the pot swirl. And the key to this is I don't want to 
overly mix and create a really ugly color with this. Swirl it a few times. I am going to gently break the fall of the batter by holding the spatula parallel to the surface. It is really starting to set up here. And I'm gonna just kind of shimmy my spatula without hitting the top of that batter that I originally put down. Okay, you see how I'm not able to reach the other half? I'm gonna switch it around because I'm right-handed and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm evening out my soap layers by just kind of gently tapping. Okay, and I'm gonna... All right, so now I'm gonna pipe the top of this soap uh, called afternoon tea. Setting up pretty fast. Oh, oh, hold up, hold up. So I'm going to put the frosting Okay, I'm going to continue frosting or piping. I'm a tiny bit short on frosting and just quickly mix up a small batch. So now what I'm going to use is Mad Micah's Fairy Duster. So by the way, I finished piping. There was lots of scrambling. I must have remade. I kept on running short on the soap batter. Um, so I had to like make two batches for the soap base and I had to make two batches for the, um, so I'm dusting on some Mad Micah's Fairy Dust Sparkle Plenty. That's the name of this particular duster um, filled with that particular sparkle glitter, biodegradable glitter. So I have um, my embeds. So I've dusted it with mica. I like the kind of white glittery mica. I'm going to put first the little embeds for the the tea. So I'm marking off like about every inch. There's one. So I'm setting them in. The handles are like really uh, quite fragile. Each of these um, high top soaps do take a while for me. I have heard of people master batching their oils too, just having like their oils, like um, lots of their oils, I don't know, like a gallon or more, or maybe several gallons of their oils, just all formulated and just in some sort of container ready to go and all you would have to do is melt them in a pot to do your orders. But I, I'm, I'm really not at that point, I don't think, that I have that many orders that I need to do master batching. I, I do master batching of my lies because I can't wait for my lye water to um, cool down. So, you know, I do them in jugs and I'll go as far as doing that getting that live water ready in, in advance. I don't want to overly embed them because then you can't really um, see them. I really piled it on here in, in this soap. Let me turn it. So those are my 
those are my um, teapots. I noticed that with the teapot mold that some of them had the handles on the opposite side. So I have to keep that in mind. The color of these biscuits is really funny. They, these biscuits look so real. I'm really liking this. So I wanted to, maybe I thought, maybe I'll put a clock on one side, but that is such a huge clock. Like who wants a big wonky clock sticking out? So that clock there, maybe I'll use that for another time. I'm short like a biscuit. Cannot believe it. I am short one biscuit. But it's so weird. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It could be an extra fancy piece with one of these little clocks. So I'm just, it's going to be like, it's definitely going to be the tea time. So. so here we go. This is my afternoon tea. High top soap from Greenberry Soaps. This is a wholesale order, so it will not be available uh, in my store unless you would like to make a request for a single loaf. You do not have to do a wholesale order, which will be multiple loaves of soap. If you do not want multiple, let's say larger quantity loaves, uh, larger quantities of loaves, and you just want one loaf of something, you can, um, you can order this through my shop and the retail for the loaf is there, but you will definitely be, um, be experiencing a savings because it will be less expensive than purchasing one bar of each soap. Here we go. This is afternoon tea. And in a little bit, um, it might be 24 hours for me, but in a few seconds, you will see the cutting of afternoon tea soap by Juniper Berry Soaps, which is a special order soap. So if, um, for Jenny, if you're out there, this video is for you.